The Sagnac effect, named after French physicist Georges Sagnac, is a phenomenon encountered in interferometry that is elicited by rotation. The Sagnac effect manifests itself in a setup called a ring interferometer. A beam of light is split and the two beams are made to follow the same path but in opposite directions. To act as a ring the trajectory must enclose an area. On return to the point of entry the two light beams are allowed to exit the ring and undergo interference. The relative phases of the two exiting beams, and thus the position of the interference fringes, are shifted according to the angular velocity of the apparatus. This arrangement is also called a Sagnac interferometer. A gimbal-mounted mechanical gyroscope remains pointing in the same direction after spinning up, and thus can be used as a rotational reference for an inertial navigation system. With the development of so-called laser gyroscopes and fiber-optic gyroscopes based on the Sagnac effect, the bulky mechanical gyroscope is replaced by one having no moving parts in many modern inertial navigation systems. The principles behind the two devices are different. However, a conventional gyroscope relies on the principle of conservation of angular momentum whereas the sensitivity of the ring interferometer to rotation arises from the invariance of the speed of light for all inertial frames of reference, description and operation. Typically three or more mirrors are used, so that counter-propagating light beams follow a closed path such as a triangle or square. Alternatively fiber optics can be employed to guide the light through a closed path. If the platform on which the ring interferometer is mounted is rotating, the interference fringes are displaced compared to their position when the platform is not rotating. The amount of displacement is proportional to the angular velocity of the rotating platform. The axis of rotation does not have to be inside the enclosed area. The Sagnac effect in a circular loop can be understood on an intuitive level as follows. When the loop is rotating, the point of entry, exit moves during the transit time of the light. The backwards propagating beam covers less distance than the forwards propagating beam and arrives earlier. This creates a shift in the interference pattern. The shift of the interference fringes is thereby proportional to the platform's angular velocity. This simplistic explanation, however, breaks down in cases where the light is propagating through a medium which has a refractive index that is not one. In that case, Relativistic addition of velocities can be used to calculate the lab frame phase velocity of the light moving in the same direction as the rotation, as well as for the light moving in the opposite direction from the rotation. The difference in lab frame phase velocities determines the difference in travel times, and this difference in travel times can be multiplied by the optical frequency to determine a phase difference. The rotation thus measured is an absolute rotation, that is, the platform's rotation with respect to an inertial reference frame. History Early suggestions to build a giant ring interferometer to measure the rotation of the Earth were made by Oliver Lodge in 1897, and then by Albert Abraham Michelson in 1904. They hoped that with such an interferometer, it would be possible to decide between the idea of a stationary ether, and an ether which is completely dragged by the Earth. That is, if the hypothetical ether were carried along by the Earth, the result would be negative, while a stationary ether would give a positive result. Max von Lauer in 1911 continued the theoretical work of Michelson, and also incorporated special relativity in his calculations. He predicted a positive result for both special relativity and for the stationary ether, because in those theories the speed of light is independent of the velocity of the source and thus the propagation time for the counter-propagating rays is not the same when viewed from inertial frames of reference, only complete ether drag models would give a negative result. While Lauer confined his investigations on inertial frames, Paul Langevin and others described the effect when viewed from rotating reference frames. In practice, 
The first interferometry experiment aimed at observing the correlation of angular velocity and phase shift was performed by the French scientist, Georges Sagnac in 1913. Its purpose was to detect the effect of the relative motion of the ether. Sagnac believed that his results constituted proof of the existence of a stationary ether. However, as explained above, two years earlier, Max von Lauer had already shown that this effect is consistent with special relativity. An experiment conducted in 1911 by Franz Harris, aimed at making measurements of the Fresnel drag of light propagating through moving glass, was in 1920 recognized by Lauer as actually constituting a Sagnac experiment. Not aware of the Sagnac effect, Harris had realized the presence of an unexpected bias in his measurements, but was unable to explain its cause. In 1926, an ambitious ring interferometry experiment was set up by Albert Michelson and Henry Gale. The aim was to find out whether the rotation of the Earth has an effect on the propagation of light in the vicinity of the Earth. The Michelson-Gale-Pearson experiment was a very large ring interferometer, large enough to detect the angular velocity of the Earth. The outcome of the experiment was that the angular velocity of the Earth as measured by astronomy was confirmed to within measuring accuracy. The ring interferometer of the Michelson-Gale experiment was not calibrated by comparison with an outside reference. From its design it could be deduced where the central interference fringe ought to be if there would be zero shift. The measured shift was 230 parts in 1000, with an accuracy of 5 parts in 1000. The predicted shift was 237 parts in 1000. Theory The shift in interference fringes in a ring interferometer can be viewed intuitively as a consequence of the different distances that light travels. Due to the rotation of the ring, the simplest derivation is for a circular ring of radius r, with a refractive index of 1, rotating at an angular velocity of, but the result is general for loop geometries with other shapes. If a light source emits in both directions from one point on the rotating ring, light traveling in the same direction as the rotation direction needs to travel more than one circumference around the ring before it catches up with the light source from behind. The time that it takes to catch up with the light source is given by, is the distance that the mirror has moved in that same time. Eliminating from the two equations above we get, likewise, the light traveling in the opposite direction of the rotation will travel less than one circumference before hitting the light source on the front side. So the time for this direction of light to reach the moving source again is the time difference is for, this reduces to where A is the area of the ring. Although this simple derivation is for a circular ring with an index of refraction of 1, the result holds true for any shape of rotating loop with area A. For more complicated shapes, or other refractive index values, the same result can be derived by calculating the optical phase shift in each direction using Fermat's principle and taking into account the different phase velocities for the different propagation directions in an inertial laboratory frame, which can be calculated using relativistic addition of velocities. We imagine a screen for viewing fringes placed at the light source. Given a steady light source, interference fringes will form on the screen with a fringe displacement proportional to the time differences required for the two counter-rotating beams to traverse the circuit. The phase shift is, which causes fringes to shift in proportion to in, at non-relativistic speeds. The Sagnac effect is a simple consequence of the source independence of the speed of light. In other words, the Sagnac experiment does not distinguish between pre-relativistic physics and relativistic physics. When light propagates in fiber optic cable, the setup is effectively a combination of a Sagnac experiment and the Fizeau experiment. In glass the speed of light is slower than in vacuum, and the optical cable is the moving medium. In that case the relativistic velocity addition rule applies. Pre-relativistic theories of light propagation cannot account for the Fizeau effect. 
Since emitter and detector are traveling at the same speeds, Doppler effects cancel out, so the Sagnac effect does not involve the Doppler effect. In the case of ring laser interferometry, it is important to be aware of this. When the ring laser setup is rotating, the counter-propagating beams undergo frequency shifts in opposite directions. This frequency shift is not a Doppler shift, but is rather an optical cavity resonance effect, as explained below in ring lasers. The Sagnac effect has stimulated a century-long debate on its meaning and interpretation, much of this debate being surprising since the effect is perfectly well understood in the context of special relativity, an essential point that has not been well understood until recent years, is that rotation is not required for the Sagnac effect to be manifest. What matters is that light moves along a closed circuit, and that an observer is in motion with respect to that circuit. In Fig. 5, the measured phase difference in both a standard fiber optic gyroscope, shown on the left, and a modified fiber optic conveyor, shown on the right, conform to the equation delta T equals 2 VL, C2, whose derivation is based on the constant speed of light. It is evident from this formula that the total time delay is equal to the cumulative time delays along the entire length of fiber, regardless whether the fiber is in a rotating section of the conveyor or a straight section. In addition, it is evident that there is no connection between the total delay and the area enclosed by the light path. The equation commonly seen in the analysis of a rotating, circular Sagnac interferometer, delta T equals 4A omega, C2, can be derived from the more general formula by a simple substitution of terms. Let V equals R omega, L equals 2 pi R, then delta T equals 2 VL, C2 equals 4 pi R2 omega, C2 equals 4 A omega, C2. Other generalizations A relay of pulses that circumnavigates the Earth, verifying precise synchronization, is also recognized as a case requiring correction for the Sagnac effect. In 1984 a verification was set up that involved three ground stations and several GPS satellites, with relays of signals both going eastward and westward around the world. In the case of a Sagnac interferometer a measure of difference in arrival time is obtained by producing interference fringes, and observing the fringe shift. In the case of a relay of pulses around the world the difference in arrival time is obtained directly from the actual arrival time of the pulses. In both cases the mechanism of the difference in arrival time is the same. The Sagnac effect. The Hafiler Keating experiment is also recognized as a counterpart to Sagnac effect physics. In the actual Hafiler Keating experiment the mode of transport gave rise to time dilation effects of its own, and calculations were needed to separate the various contributions. For the case of clocks that are transported so slowly that time dilation effects arising from the transport are negligible the amount of time difference between the clocks when they arrive back at the starting point will be equal to the time difference that is found for a relay of pulses that travels around the world. 207 nanoseconds. Reference frames The Sagnac effect is not an artifact of the choice of reference frame. It is independent of the choice of reference frame, as is shown by a calculation that invokes the metric tensor for an observer at the axis of rotation of the ring interferometer and rotating with it, yielding the same outcome. If one starts with the Minkowski metric and does the coordinate conversions and the line element of the resultant metric is where is proper time for the central observer, is distance from the center, is the angular distance along the ring from the direction the central observer is facing, is the direction perpendicular to the plane of the ring, and, is the rate of rotation of the ring and the observer. Under this metric, the speed of light tangent to the ring is depending on whether the light is moving against or with the rotation of the ring. Note that only the case of is inertial, for this frame of reference is non-inertial, which is why the speed of light at positions distant from the observer can vary from 